Namaste, myself, Mrs. Rosen Baker, PGTPC from KNB Patan I will read with the magnetism of 12th class. And uh, the first part lesson, we have dealt with the magnetic field, bar magnet and properties, magnetic field lines, then Earth's magnetism, and so on. In this session, we will deal with the magnetism exhibited by materials. So, I welcome all of you for uh, this session. Let us start with the some terms associated with the magnetism exhibited by magnetic materials. And the first one is magnetic permeability. In the the ability of a material to permit the passage of magnetic lines of force through it is known as magnetic permeability. It is denoted by mu. Mu is the ratio of magnetic induction to the magnetizing field. Magnetic induction means magnetism present inside the specimen. H, H is the external magnetic field which is magnetizing its their ratio is known as uh, the magnetic permeability denoted by mu. So, mu is different for different substance. It means that high mu, if a substance has high mu, it can be magnetized very easily. It is uh, Next is the magnetizing force or magnetic intensity. The activity with the soft iron and the current carrying oil. We have seen that the soft iron core become magnetized on passing the current through the coil. So, the soft iron is magnetized due to the magnetic field produced by the passage of current through the coil. And... Uh, that uh, magnetic field present in the coil it is the external magnetic field which is magnetizing the specimen. So, its magnetic intensity is denoted as H which is the ratio of magnetizing intensity uh, in the, uh, to the magnetic permeability. Magnetizing force or magnetic intensity is the ratio of magnetic induction to the magnetic permeability. And the next term is intensity of magnetization denoted by I. It is the magnetic moment per unit volume of the specimen. Due to the electron movement, the molecules or atoms have uh, dipole moment and the magnetic dipole moment produced per unit volume that is in one meter cube how much magnetic dipole moment is produced that is known as the intensity of magnetization. So this is magnetic moment divided by volume and next term is magnetic susceptibility that is how much the specimen is uh, susceptible for external field and numerically it is equal to the ratio of intensity of magnetization induced in the material to the magnetizing force how much the external field has induced the magnetization in the specimen and to the external magnetic force that is known as the magnetic susceptibility it has no dimension and no unit meaning the ratio of similar physical quantities like mu mu and chi they have uh, no dimension and uh, no unit being the ratio of similar quantities and this mu and uh, susceptibility they are related by this relation mu is equal to mu0 into 1 plus chi m. m stands for magnetization, magnetic susceptibility. Okay. And 1 plus chi is, can be written as mu r. 
the relative magnetic permeability or it is the ratio of permeability of the specimen to that of free space. Mu R is equal to mu divided by mu zero. Now we will deal with the magnetic flux. In the previous section we have seen the magnetic field associated with the magnet. There are magnetic field lines passing through the specimen and to, through the and their region around it. And the total number of magnetic field lines crossing, crossing perpendicular to an area is known as the magnetic flux phi B. This stands for, uh, indicates magnetism. Phi is the symbol for denoting magnetic flux. It is the sigma B dot delta S where it is the magnetic induction. B is the magnetic induction or the magnetic flux so density or it is the magnetic field strength and delta S yes, stands for small area element sigma denotes summing over all area elements of magnetic induction okay so that will yield you the total number of magnetic field lines passing through the total surface area and it has uh, it is a scalar quantity it is a dot product okay its si unit is Weber now there is Gauss law in magnetism it states that the net magnetic flux through any closed surface is zero that is integral b dot del ds or sigma b dot delta s equals zero here you can see the magnetic lines for lines of force they are uh, coming out from here continuing a curve this is coming here it is entering here if you are taking a surface here a whatever magnetic field lines coming out will be continuing as closed loop and it will be entering here so the outgoing flux is positive and the incoming flux will be taken uh, negative so the total flux will be zero okay this gives the Gauss law in magnetism now we will turn move on to diamagnetic materials materials uh, some materials are attracting towards the external field some are repelling uh, and uh, some are feebly attracting some are strongly attracting so depending upon the behavior in external magnetic field the they are classified as diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic material. Now we will move on to ferromagnetic materials. The ferromagnetic materials, they are um, attracted by magnets, by magnets, but uh, their attraction will be greater than the diamagnetic than paramagnetic materials. Here, the larger number of atoms they have having permanent magnetic dipole moments and but uh, here uh, a large number of molecules with the magnetic moments along a direction they will form a region in which there will be a common magnetic dipole moment along a single direction that is known as a domain. Uh, the size of the domain will be of the order of millimeters and when placed in external field these domains will be growing in size at the expense of others there will be other domains in which the magnetic, uh, magnetic dipole moment will be in different directions so when this ferromagnetic substance is placed in external magnetic field all of these domains will be arranged parallel to the external field and the magnetism inside the specimen will be increased manifold. So they will be strongly attracted to the external magnetic field, ferromagnetic substances um, like iron, steel, ticonal, Alnico alloys of iron steel, they are ferromagnets. Okay, and there are two types of uh, ferromagnets 
when uh, ferromagnetic substances like uh, soft iron is placed in a magnetic field produced by current carrying solenoid if the current is switched off it will lose its magnetism unlike steel which will retain it so depending upon whether it will retain or lose magnetism when the external magnetic field is removed these ferromagnetic materials are of two types that is soft ferromagnetic materials and hard ferromagnetic materials soft ferromagnetic materials will lose the magnetism on removal but hard ferromagnetic will retain the magnetism now you can watch this activity hello Today I'm going to demonstrate the difference between a ferromagnetic material and a paramagnetic material. And I'm going to use as my example for the ferromagnetic material this permanent magnet. It's actually a series of six permanent magnets aligned together. And the blue side is the north seeking pole and the yellow side is the south seeking pole. And I have another one here. Also blue is north seeking. Now, um, in a permanent magnet, a ferromagnet, the spins of the electrons, the unpaired electrons, are all pointing in the same direction, all right, along the axis of the uh, magnet. And because of that, um, if we put north to north, you can see there's a repulsion. And if we put north to south, there's an attraction. And we can do that on either side. I can put south to south and get an attraction a repulsion whoops, and north to north and get a repulsion you get the idea you can even kind of feel they don't want to align this way but they do want to align that way now you've all seen this before it's very common but now i'm going to talk about paramagnetism how does paramagnetism differ from ferromagnetism how does a first of all if you put a compass next to a paramagnetic material it would not be attract uh, it would not align the uh, the compass needle whereas uh, you get an alignment with uh, a permanent magnet in a paramagnetic material um, by the way this is manganese chloride mncl2 dissolved in water it's a saturated solution close to saturated each manganese ion has five unpaired electrons. So it has a lot of electrons, unpaired electrons in the sample. But they're aligned in all different directions so that there's no net magnetic field emanating from this material. But you can partially align these electrons by putting it in an external field. I'm not able to do this with a weak magnet like this. But if I use a stronger magnet, and this, this is a, um, a strong magnet that I got from Educational Innovations. And I'm, I've marked the North Seeking Pole and the South Seeking Pole on it. And the, the spins are all aligned along the axis. Now you can see, you will see in a second, that if I put the North Seeking side here near the paramagnetic material, it's attracted. The paramagnetic is attracted to the North Seeking. Now let's do it with the, the South Seeking pole of the magnet and you will see that it's also attracted to the south seeking pole and I could do this on either side it doesn't matter if I put this over here I get an attraction to the south seeking pole and then if I put the north seeking pole here I gotta wait till it stops spinning but you can see I get an attraction to the north seeking pole so in paramagnetism, you have unpaired electrons. Like if you had something like sodium chloride, there's no unpaired electrons. It's, it's not paramagnetic, it's not ferromagnetic. But in a material where there's unpaired electrons, usually in the metal ion, um, the electrons are unaligned in the absence of a field. But then when you put it in a magnetic field, you get a partial alignment, not a total alignment, but a partial alignment of the, of the spins. 
and that causes the the the, the aligned spins to be attracted to it to that external field. It's a weak attraction, much weaker than a permanent magnet because you only have partial alignment. Remember, the spins pointing in the direction of the field are attracted. Those pointing in the opposite direction are repelled. But there's more pointing in the direction of the field than in the opposite direction. So you get a weak attraction to a magnetic field. But it's something that you can actually observe using a fairly strong magnet. And again, I got this particular magnet from uh, Educational Innovation. So this is a permanent magnet, and it attracts the paramagnet. So I hope this increases your understanding of the difference between a paramagnetic material and a ferromagnetic material. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time. So the ferromagnetic property decreases with the increasing temperature, and at very high temperature, that is a curie temperature, ferromagnetic substance changes into paramagnetic substance. When the temperature is increased, ferromagnetic property will be decreasing and paramagnetic property will be increasing. And at a particular temperature, the substance entirely changes into a paramagnetic substance, that is uh, if you are uh, increasing the temperature of a magnet, its magnetic property loses. Okay. So, the susceptibility in the paramagnetic phase is given by C divided by T minus Tc. Now, ferromagnetic materials can be used for making magnets and their behavior. In the external field, according to the direction and the magnitude of the external magnetizing field, what happens inside the that can be related, that can be understood by hysteresis curve. It is a graph between the intensity of magnetization and the magnetic intensity. So you will get a graph like this. Consider first a soft iron is placed inside a solenoid. Now it is not magnetized. When the current is switched on, there will be magnetic field produced by solenoid. So the soft iron will turn into a magnet. If you are increasing the current, the intensity of magnetization increases along this direction from O to A. Then it will reach up to the maximum when all the dipole moments are aligned along that direction of field. After that, we cannot, uh, even if you are increasing the external field, the magnetic field of specimen will not increase. Then you will decrease the external field, but the magnetism inside the specimen will reach here only, even when the external field becomes zero. So, to demagnetize it completely, we have to reverse the field. So when when the external field is uh, zero, the magnet uh, retains some magnetism. This uh, magnetism present in the specimen, when the external magnetic field becomes zero, this thing, the OB, this is known as the residual magnetism or remnants or retentivity. Then, if we are reversing the magnetic field, the you are applying the magnetic field in the opposite direction, the dipoles will be aligned or flipped in the opposite direction and the magnetism of the specimen completely disappears. So, how much magnetic field has been applied in the opposite direction to me to demagnetize this completely is denoted by OC. This OC is known as the T. Okay. Now, if you are increasing that negative field, the magnetism increases in the opposite direction till all the magnetic moments are aligned in the opposite direction in the soft iron. That is, it will reach up to D. How much it has reached up to A? That will be reached up to 
D also. Then if you are increasing it in the positive direction, if you are um, decreasing this value, then the magnetism inside the cement starts to decrease and it will become zero at a particular external field here and you have to make it again the external field opposite to take it to zero. So now the magnetism inside the specimen has reached here at the point F then it will reach uh, to A along only this direction. That is the magnetization of the specimen. It will be lagging behind the magnetizing field and this lagging of magnetization in the specimen behind this magnetizing field is known as the hysteresis and one more point is to be noted here is that the area of the loop denotes the energy dissipated in the form of heat energy uh, course of electromagnets like soft iron in the course of um, transformer they undergo magnetization cycles so we will choose materials with the minimum energy loss for uh, in such cases okay so depending upon the nature of hysteresis curve we will choose uh, materials for making permanent and uh, electromagnets so materials with the thin hysteresis loop is used for temporary magnets that with the wide loop is used for permanent magnets permanent magnets you have seen a magnetic compass retains its magnetism okay that's a permanent magnet so that is generated by the electronic arrangement spinning of electrons in the material and uh, when a ferromagnetic substance that is hard hard ferromagnetic substance is placed in a current carrying solenoid you can magnetize it that is how uh, we are uh, making these bar magnets by steel okay so that be will become a permanent magnet when all the domains are aligned in the same way So they should have high retentivity, high coercivity and high permeability. These are the criteria for choosing materials for making permanent magnets. They should have high retentivity, high coercivity and high permeability. So if it is having high retentivity, it will have strong magnetism. And uh, if it has high coercivity, very very high magnetic field are needed to demagnetize it that then only it can store uh, retain its magnetism okay if it is raised by small magnet fields then we cannot uh, choose it for making permanent magnet so, and it should have definitely high permeability but electromagnet is a <coughs> they ha can be by uh, you have seen that a soft end rod become an electromagnet when it is placed in the solenoid so when the current is switched off it has become it has uh, lost its magnetism. So we will choose materials for electromagnets. And what is the specialty of this electromagnets? If you are switching off the current, the, it will lose the magnetism. So we can use uh, it at our con convenience. If uh, it, its uh, strength depends upon the current number of turns of the coil and the core used. So we can alter the magnetic strength of magnetic field produced. Okay. That is the speciality of electromagnets. These electromagnets, they are uh, used in cranes, uh, telephone diagrams, electric bells, cranes, uh, etc. Okay. So permanent magnets and electromagnets can be made by ferromagnets and we should choose materials for permanent and electromagnets depending upon their retentivity, coercivity and permeability. So, 
that's all for uh, this uh, lesson